everybody and welcome to another episode of Adventures with Andy. Today we're going to dye yarn inspired by this picture of an iceberg from the February 2022 dye along with Kim Knits. Now the dye along is already over and Rebecca has done the recap video showing everyone's yarn so we're not technically getting to take part in the dye along but I did I had already bought the dye that I was going to use for um for for dyeing some yarn for this I had an idea and everything and it went out and I got some food coloring to to do it before I before my schedule just became what my schedule became so I'm going to dye the yarn anyway there's nothing that says we can't dye it even though the the dye along itself is technically over with, right? You can dye whatever yarn you want. That's right, I can. It's your That's yarn. That's right. That's right. We've got five blues that we're working with. If you notice on the bottom of the inspiration photo, Rebecca pulled out five blues. And when she does that, um, she, she actually does a color picker to find out what those shades are. So the, they were five, there are five colors from the, the picture and so I thought it would be kind of interesting to dye something sort of along that theme. So we've got, these are all Wilton Icing Gel food colors. We've got Royal Blue, Teal, Delphinium Blue, Cornflower Blue, and Sky Blue. Now the Royal Blue and the Teal I've used before. In fact, you know that Teal is one of my favorite colors. So is the royal blue, I mean, let's be honest. But the delphinium, cornflower, and sky blue are all new to me. I've never used these before. So it could be interesting. And we're going to be dyeing three skeins of Dyer Supplier Silvery Sock today. And it is, I got the bag here. Yes, I just went ahead and emptied the bag. Um, it is 60% superwash merino wool, 20% nylon, 20% silver stellina. And I've had it just soaking in water with a generous splash of vinegar for a couple of hours now while we were having lunch. I was getting this set up. I was mixing dye so y'all didn't have to get bored watching me do that. So it's just in here. There's no heat on this yet. I just got it sitting on the hot plate in preparation for that. And yes, you may notice it is not our crock pot at this time. Now, I, we're using a stainless steel stock pot. Today, what we're going to do with the yarn is we're going to be dipping the skeins of yarn, and I want plenty of room for everything to move around. So I decided to go ahead and scale up to the larger container. It'll be a little bit easier to do than in the crock pot. We're going to dip dye two skeins. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to start by putting all three skeins in with the sky blue which is our lightest blue and let it pick up all that color so that we've got a nice light blue base and then for the next color the cornflower blue one skein we're going to dip dye four fifths of it in the color the second skein we're going to dip it about a third of the way into the cornflower blue and the third skein, we're essentially going to be using it as a mop um, because we don't want any of this cornflower blue left before we move on to our third color. But I don't want to drop the, the first two skeins in completely and have it cover all of it. So we're just going to take that third skein and just put it in there completely and let it soak up all the rest of the dye that's in the dye bath. Then with the third color, the delphinium blue, for the first skein, we will dip it in three-fifths of the way. For the second skein, we're going to turn it, we're going to rotate it about 45 to 90 degrees, and again, dip it a third of the way in. And for our fourth color, and then we'll just toss our third skein in there to soak up whatever color's left. For our fourth color, the first skein, we will dip it in two fifths of the way. And our second skein, we'll rotate another 45 to 90 degrees, dip it in a third of the way. And then we'll throw our third skein in to soak up the last of the color of the teal. And then we'll move on to our royal blue, which we will dip our first skein in only one fifth of the way. Our second skein, we'll rotate again, our 45 to 90 degrees, dip it in a third of the way, and then take our third skein 
and just toss it in there to let it soak up the rest of that color. So you got the idea of what we're doing. We're gonna have one skein that's basically gonna to be top down a gradient for, through all five of our colors. Our next skein, it's gonna kind of rotate around it in, in how those colors go on it. And our third skein, we're just gonna be layering each of the colors over top of it. So we're gonna end up with three skeins on the same base using the same colors, but they should all end up looking different, mm -hmm. pretty different. Now, as far as the dye, how I mixed it up, each of these jars is a quarter teaspoon of the dye mixed in 100 milliliters of water. This is a really long intro, isn't it? It seems like it. I do apologize for rambling so much, y'all. All right, come in here and we're gonna get busy dyeing this yarn. So I'm gonna start by topping up our water that's in our stock pot. And I'm gonna do that with some water that I have preheated using my electric kettle, just because it's gonna help bring things up to a dyeing temperature a little bit easier, a little more quickly. You can see the steam already. start with dye number one, our sky blue. Is this the right one, right? This is sky blue. Okay. It's a very bright color, isn't it? Is it? It's a very bright color, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Sorry, y'all. You can see that even though it's been sitting in vinegar water for a while, it's still got lots of sparkly to it. I do not know if the camera's picking it up, but I'm gonna assume it probably will. If not, you will just have to trust me. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna put all three of these in at the same time, even though they're gonna get completely submerged because I don't want any of them to get preference over the other. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and Turn on the hot plate. And we're just gonna let this sit for a while until it picks up all of that dye. And I'm gonna go look for my measuring cup. So I can tell when the dye bath is exhausted. Our dye bath is mostly exhausted. No, the yarn has not been sitting like this the whole time. I just moved it out of the way. Um, it's mostly exhausted, but not completely. And when I poured all that extra water in, I did not add any vinegar. I want to go ahead and do that now because I really want this dye to strike quickly to the yarn. So I'm going to go ahead and put about a half a cup. Yes, he's sizzling. If you're ever looking for a good arm workout, dye three skeins of yarn at a time. It's heavy when it's wet. just been moving the yarn around every once in a while to make sure it's all got access to the dye. And we've got a very nice pretty light blue here. Yeah, it's definitely starting to exhaust now. So I'm gonna let it, let it just sit here for probably another five, 10 minutes and then we'll move on to dip dyeing. So it's been about 10 minutes and our dye bath is basically exhausted. There is just the faintest hint of blue in there. Not enough to worry about. So I'm gonna go ahead and fish all of this out. All right. Give you a quick view of how these look so far. Color one, it's a nice, pretty sky blue. And now we're gonna put our cornflower blue in. Deep. It is deep. 
All right, so our first skein, which is kind of a mess, and we're not gonna worry about that because you don't try to untangle yarn when it's wet, it just doesn't work. All right, we're gonna dip it in about four fifths, okay? So to about here, and I know you can't see that, but Put this to the side. And this one is going a third of the way, right? Yes, one third. I didn't measure these to know what was a fifth or a third. Just kind of eyeballing it. And now then our third skein, which is our mop, is just going in here. All by its lonesome and will hopefully be enough to exhaust this. It's not too terrible much, right? Our dye bath is basically exhausted from our second color. So I'm going to go ahead and take this. Okay, I'm just going to put this over here in our giant mason jar. Now we move on to our third color, which is our delphinium blue. And now our first skein is going to go three-fifths of the way in. So. About there? Yeah. Okay. So about there. I am Never. all the way up on my tiptoes, y'all, and I got my arm stretched all the way straight up. Just to barely have this out of the water. Okay, so now for our second skein, I'm going to turn this 45 to 90 degrees, and then again, dip it in a third. All right, so to about right here. looking pretty good. You can see on the, the back there it's got some color. So go ahead and move it over here to our pan and grab our third skein and stick it in there. We just wait. Our dye bath is basically clear, so we're going to go ahead and pull this out. I mean, it looks a lot darker in the pot than it is. Mm. 
Next up, teal. That's just so pretty. I mean, seriously, look at how pretty that is. It's just such a pretty color. Now, for our first skein, it's going to go in two fifths of the way now. So, to about here. see the bath clear and I want to make sure I save some for the other skein so turning again like this right mm -hmm. I know y'all can't see but he can yeah that looks good okay and that way if you dip it in now some of the sky blue and how do you remember that? I don't remember what colors they were. You got some, you got sky, cornflower, delphinium, now teal, and then next up, royal. See, he's got the complete opposite memory from me. I can't remember anything. He remembers everything. so much less of that first skein that there's a lot more dye in the dye bath. So it is going to take a little longer for things to exhaust. I'm trying to stick with this teal on this one for a little bit longer just because there doesn't seem to be much of a difference between it and the sky blue and I want them to be different. So that's why you're seeing me do this longer on this one than I had before. That's a pretty decent color. Let's go ahead and put our third skein in here. All right, now we just have to let it sit. There's just one more color to go after this. So come on, hurry up and exhaust so that, you know, we can get to our last color. All right, let's take a look and see. Yeah, our dye bath is like basically clear. I know I've said that a lot, but that's because we're doing lots of different dye baths. But yes, so we're gonna go ahead and take this out. And again, incredibly clear. It looks much darker in the pan than it really is. So now we move on to our last dye, the royal blue. Are you excited yet? I'm excited. Uh-huh. Sorry. It's all mixed up in quite a brilliant blue. All right, now this is gonna be interesting because our first gain of yarn, we're only gonna put it in one fifth of the way. So it's not gonna be getting much, much dye. It's gonna leave a whole lot of, of dye left over for our other two skeins. So just this very little bit here is what's going in. I 
and yet it has gotten more dye than any of the other yarn at this point in this skein. That's why the the yarn dyeing math was just too complicated for me to deal with because yarn will only accept so much dye and this last little bit was going to end up getting dip dyed five times. So that was just going to make things really confusing to make sure that I didn't have too much for it to be able to take up but still had good color on everything else. good. I am starting to notice a little bit of a color change in the dye bath. Yep. Which means we have picked up quite a bit of that color. Now of course our two skeins can be slightly different especially with this because if there's any red in that blue it will have struck first. But that's okay. And now we start dipping this a third of the way. What do you think, Chad? Looking good. But I mean, good. you think it's good? Yeah. Okay. We will go ahead and we'll put this right over here. And now we can put our last skein in. This is our dye bath right here, and I do not know if this last skein is going to manage to soak it all up. We shall see. Because that is a whole lot of dye. <laughs> And this already has a lot of dye in it. <laughs> it's starting to get lighter. All right, well, now we're just going to let this sit. I will be coming back periodically and just swishing the yarn around to give the inner strands access to it so that they can soak up some of that. All right, so our dye bath is, it's mostly exhausted. It's a little bit darker than what it's been when I've switched the colors before. Um, but it's still pretty close to exhausted. You know, one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to force it to exhaust on this skein of yarn only to have the color wash out when I wash and rinse the yarn because it's oversaturated. You know, 
as I've said before, yarn can only only take up so much dye. After that, even if you make it exhaust the dye bath, it's not actually dyeing the fibers. So when you wash it, it'll just bleed out until all of that excess dye is gone. So I don't want to risk doing that just for the sake of exhausting the dye bath on this skein. So I'm going to go ahead and take it out. Put it over here in our oversized jar. Give y'all a quick peek of what it looks like so far. You see, it's a really nice blend. I, I don't think it's showing up on the camera as deep as it is, but we can see strands that have taken up the different colors. It's not a solid color, which is very cool. I'll wash it tomorrow. And I'll wash them tomorrow as well. And then I will knit up some swatches and come back and show y'all what we ended up with. And here's our finished yarn. We got three really pretty skeins of yarn, didn't we? We've got our skein where we just dipped it down into the dye bath in gradually decreasing increments. We've got the one where we turned it 45 to 90 degrees before dipping it into the dye bath. And then our skein where we just put the whole thing into the dye bath and let it soak up whatever was left so that it layered the colors over top of each other. And they all look very different, but at the same time, really complimentary. This is our skein where we dipped it in, um, starting first, you know, with four fifths, three fifths, two fifths, and then our last little fifth. And it's... It gives us this gradient from, you know, this light blue all the way down into almost a purple blue, a, a very purpley color. And I think that's because we did this one first when we did the dipping and it picked up a lot of that red in the delphinium blue, I believe it was. I think so. I think so. Um, and if I were to do this again, I would split the dye into two halves so that there was still, you know, equal amounts of that red left for both of the skeins rather than having one pick it up all at the same, you know, all at once. I didn't think about that. That's okay. I, I also love the teal on it. What do you think of it, Jad? Looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, he is a man of few words. Mm -hmm. And then of course, Here's our skein, where you can see we've got some nice distinct stripes here. Um, we've got, we do have some sections here where the colors kind of stack, and it's, it's sort of reminiscent of when we dyed yarn on the zebra base, where we had those, you know, shorter sections of the stripes than the longer sections of the stripes. It's sort of remin reminiscent of that, but still very distinct stripes. Um, and you may notice I didn't do a 30 by 30 swatch on this one. This is, I think, 30 by 15, 30 by 20, because by this point you could already see the pattern of how it was going to go. What do you think of it, Chad? I do like how it turned out. Yeah? You yeah. like those stripes? I do. Yeah. What are you going to knit with it? I don't know. <laughs> That's why he always asks, what are you going to knit with it? I don't know yet. I'm just dying it. You're like, I'm not here for the finished product. I'm just here for the dying. <laughs> and then our skein where we turned it before dipping it and we've got instead of having a gradient like this up here is our lightest color that matches this we don't have that same kind of a gradient you know where this goes from a light into a dark this is just like sort of a interesting rotating color pattern on it and it's it's actually even different colors from what we got over here and of course part of that is because this first skein grabbed up a lot of that red you can see we've got some of the purple here but not as much and not as dark as there but also because of the way the colors layered over on this one over here by the time you get down to the bottom you've got five colors mixing together whereas over here on this one you only ever have two colors mixing together. And so I think that gives us, you know, more intensity of each of the different shades. What do you think, Chad? 
I think this is probably my favorite one. Yeah? Yeah. Have you seen the swatch for how this one knit up? No, I haven't. Uh -huh. Well, it knits up completely different from the other one. That's how this one knits up. We have much more unique stripes. And by unique, I don't mean unique in, you know, di different colors. But, you know, instead of having what just seems like two colors striping together, we've got a row of purple, a row of blue, you know, dark blue, a row of light blue. You know, we've got these single row striped working all the way through this and more colors of them compared to this one. You want to lend me a hand over here, Chad, so you can see the difference in how these two worked up. And I think that's kind of cool. I think that's really really neat the way that worked. And then our final skein is the one where we layered the colors by just letting it pick up whatever was left in the dye bath. And we do have different colors of blue in here. It's not all just one shade. We've got some darker, some lighter, you know, some really vibrant patches, but not as much differentiation as we do on the other two skeins. And here's a swatch for how it works up. And you really don't notice distinct stripes in this one. It blends together, you know, into a really nice blurple color. And if I can get, get you to lend me a hand again, Chad. So this is how the three compare. I really need to get like a blocking mat out or something and pin these down on it. But this is how these three compare and how they work up. All of them completely different. So which one, looking at the swatches and seeing how they work up and understanding that of course, over a larger size project, it's gonna look different or a smaller size project. Um, which one is your favorite? The middle one, the turning this one. one. Yeah. yeah. I like the distinct stripes mm -hmm. with all the different colors mixed in. I yeah. think that one's my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite is this one. Yeah. That I one reminds me the most of the yellow ones that you did recently, mm -hmm. where they kind of all, you have hints of color throughout there, but they all blend in. Yeah. In, in the last episode. Yeah. And I actually have a sweater that is a lot like this one. Your mm -hmm. parents got it for me. Yep. Um, it doesn't have the sparkles, but it's got the, the blue and purple blending in it. And I love that sweater. Maybe that's why I like this one so much. <laughs> Can you need a second sweater? Uh, not with just one skein of yarn. I'd have to tie some more. You can knit a matching sweater. I, I, oh, he's pointing to my associate. We will have to take a short video of her that I can plug in. Yes, my office is supposed to be a cat-free zone. Toby does not play by the rules, though. She doesn't live in this room, but she comes in every day and spends the day with me in here. It is her office too, she says. Well, I hope you enjoyed tagging along with us for this iceberg dye along and getting to see the three different methods that we used to dye these three skeins of yarn. Did you have fun, Chad? I did. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I had fun. Yeah? I always have fun with y'all. I like when Chad tags along in these videos with me because he makes me laugh <laughs> with his bad puns. What bad puns? Oh, the bad only pun. bad pun is a pun you never say. That is not true. <laughs> if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, you can give it a thumbs down. That's okay. Your opinion is your own and it's perfectly valid. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel so you never miss any of our adventures. Gotta make sure you turn on those notifications too so you get those. Leave us a comment below and let us know what you think of the video and what you think of the yarn that we ended up with. And you know, which one is your favorite? Do you like the sparkles? Yeah. Do you prefer the blended or one of the stripe patterns? Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful day and we will see you on our next adventure. Bye everybody. Say bye Chad. Bye. Bye.